Well, it's our final Wednesday show here in the month of September, but it's a happy occasion that brings us all together as we welcome you to the Coors Live, Steve Fairchild Coaches Show here on the Colorado State Sports Network as the Rams are coming off a victory as they knock off Idaho here this past weekend. Welcome everybody to the Beach House Grill here in Fort Collins. Brian Roth with you. We'll be joined by the Coach Steve Fairchild here in just a moment, but boy, what an exciting game up in Fort Collins we had on Saturday. The Rams, they knock off Idaho 36 to 34, the final score. Ben Delay, the 35-yard game-winning field goal. As time expires, the Rams pull off the victory to get their first win of the season. And I got to tell you, the crowd on Saturday was absolutely outstanding. It was an orange out, just about everybody wearing orange, 24,000 strong. And they willed that Colorado State Ram football team to a victory. So hats off to that Colorado State Ram fan base for coming out, supporting the team, and helping them get the big victory over Idaho. And let me tell you, that was a very good Idaho team that Colorado State beat on Saturday. They have a, uh, perhaps a, uh, an NFL quarterback playing for them, and it was a defense that ranked in the top 20 in the nation, a defense that Colorado State would wind up shredding in that contest. Pete Thomas had a career day. Raymond Carter, the transfer from UCLA, he was outstanding. And that Ram defense, boy, they came up with big plays when they had to down the stretch. We'll talk about all that with the coach coming up here and we'll also talk about the game coming up on Saturday. No rest for the wary as Colorado State will welcome in the fifth-ranked Horned Frogs of TCU. That'll be a noon kickoff coming up on a Saturday afternoon at Hughes Stadium. And, of course, we'll go on air two hours prior to kickoff at 10 o'clock. The coach, Steve Fairchild, he joins us next. We have a full hour to talk Rams football here from Fort Collins. We'll take a timeout. It's the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show on the Colorado State Sports Network. Live at the Beach House Grill tonight in Old Town, Fort Collins. Welcome back to the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show here on the Colorado State Sports Network. Another great crowd out here on a Wednesday evening. Brian Roth back with you and happy to be joined by the coach, Steve Fairchild, as his team gets the win over Idaho 36-34 uh, on Saturday. Steve, congratulations on the win, and uh, boy, came down to the last second. That's about as exciting of a football game as, as we've seen at Hughes Stadium in quite some time. It sure, uh, you know, it was, and it, you know, it almost, uh, after the game, I thought back and I thought, you know, that was probably a pretty good game for a fan to watch or somebody uh, watching the game would, would enjoy that type of football. But I was, I was just so happy for uh, our players and our coaches because we have been working hard we have been making strides and uh, you just like to feel like they're going to get rewarded with a win here and, and that was the case Saturday so many turning points in that contest you can go back to five six seven plays and say well that might have been the reason why the Rams won or this might have been but the crowd that you got out there yeah, was they were, outstanding they were tremendous uh, you know into it making noise I know our players feed off of that the, the student section was great and we really appreciate that. that. That's a neat environment out there to play in. I wish we'd have played there sooner than our fourth game, but um, it was good. And, and you talk about those five, six, seven plays. You know, they, you know, we always analyze the game with our football team afterwards, and there were some key plays and, and so forth. But the, the main thing was we got down the stretch uh, of the game. We were in it, and we, we needed a play on the defensive side of the ball. We needed a stop, and we got it, and then we needed a few plays offensively. Uh, to get us down a field goal range, and we got that as well. And, and those were just plays we didn't make last year. You know, we were always in those one-score games and just couldn't find a way to make one more first down or get them off the field, and we were able to do that. So that was encouraging. Yeah, it, not only do you get the victory, which is always nice, but but you get the victory in a tight game fighting adversity for, for most of the contest. You guys were down most of the game. Yeah, and, and you know, within the game we had some guys, you know, we, we – uh, didn't start Tyler McDermott at center, but all of a sudden we needed him in the second half to come in and play, and he had he had certainly responded well to to what we had done and, and practiced well and prepared himself like he was going to play, and that paid off. And Ben DeLine, you know, missing an extra point and then having a chance to respond and come back and kick game-winning field goal. So, uh, you know, like we tell our kids all the time, you just keep fighting, you know, just keep playing hard, but, you know, let the play go after it's done and start focusing on the next thing and, uh, and give all your, you know, the best you got for that play. And, and I thought our team did that. I talked with you in the post game about the offense. You said hey, we have not arrived yet offensively, but it was a, it was a step forward. You kept saying, "Boy, we're close. Boy, we're close." Did, did, 
did you see it happening like it did on Saturday with 500 total yards? Well, I, I wasn't sure about that, but I do know we have very talented players on offense, and, and Pete Thomas is a perfect example. And are, are they ready to be Division One football players and playing every snap right now? You know, who knows? But uh, someday, you know, the, this the the talent that we've assembled, I mean, really on both sides of the ball. But I look at that young offensive line. I, uh, some of the guys walking around the halls that you know we're just confident that we're gonna we're gonna keep getting better and, and it's gonna click in here. It, it just seemed like, and we talked about this the last couple of weeks, that that offense needed a couple of things to go their way to kind of get a little traction and going. And, you know, you think back to that first touchdown drive late, late in the first half. Uh, I think uh, Nick Halsey was keeping our numbers up in the booth Saturday. He said you guys only had 47 total yards offensive going into that drive. Boom, you get the long drive, then you get the turnover, and then you get another touchdown, and then it's almost like the light yeah. bulb went off, some stuff went right, and then they kind of gained you know, You get a little confidence, but I'll tell you what really happened was we were able to generate some run yeah. uh, offense, and, and when we do that, it, it just everything that we do in our scheme feeds off of that, and, and we seem to be more productive. And, and really, the first drive, we came away with no points, but we busted, a, I think, second play of the game, we busted a, you know, 15-yard run, and, uh, you know, we had a little pump route there open in the end zone on that drive and very well could have scored on that drive. So, uh, But when we're running the ball, it, it gets us in real favorable down and distances. It, it allows us to use uh, our entire playbook. It allows us to use all our, our uh, personnel packages and just, you know, it, it makes it easier for, for you to call a game when we can run it. One of the things that have stood out to me, at least, with Pete Thomas, and there's, there's a lot of things, his maturity being one of them. I think he handles himself in the pocket very well, even when he's under pressure. But the accuracy of Pete Thomas, I thought, really uh, shone through on Saturday. Yeah, you know, he's over 80% and, and put a couple there that, that could have been caught. So he is accurate. You know, the thing that uh, now that I've worked with him, you know, we liked him during the recruiting, what we saw. We, we liked everything about him when we met him and got to know him and his family and that now having you know worked with him a little bit he, he he's special in terms of he's one of those guys that really sees a lot out there some guys they uh, they stand in a pocket and they see so much and there's other guys that just can tell you yeah. uh, things that are going on uh, across the board and he's one of those and, and everyone I've been around like that has uh, been been very very successful and very very special and I think he's got a chance to do that Yeah, I remember a pass specifically to Eric Pites and I went back and watched the uh, Watched the uh, replay and he went one two three and that was actually four and then boom yeah. four and he caught Eric Pites it, and it, it was, was a 12 yard game and it, and it converted on a drive uh, that was key in that ball game and and you know, he, now he passed up the third that was open. So we'll, <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah, we'll, we'll end up uh, <laughs> We'll talk to him about that, but it's just the ability to not yank your eyes downfield and, and abort the play uh, is, is special for anybody, let, you know, fifth year senior, let alone a, a kid right out of high school. Boy, it was a blast to watch on Saturday. The Rams get that 36-34 victory. We'll talk more about the offense, talk a little defense about that uh, contest as well. Remember, they came up with some big, big plays, especially late in the contest. All that and more with the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show after this time out. We're live. From Old Town Ford Collins at the Beach House Grill. From Nelligan Sports, the Colorado State Sports Network. Welcome back to Ford Collins at the Beach House Grill here in Old Town Ford Collins. Scoreside Steve Fairchild, Coach's Show. Brian Roth with you along with the coach, Steve Fairchild. Apooter Valley Health System is proud to be the exclusive health care sponsor of Ram Athletics, and they're proud to state that when you need medical care, they're here for you. For more information, visit pvhs.org. Well, let's give out that telephone number, 1-866-702-7691. It's the number if you want to ask the coach a question, 1-866-702-7691. Steve, you, you talked about um, the offensive line. Tyler McDermott comes back in and plays center uh, after, uh, I believe it was Mark Starr suffered a concussion. Weston Richburg moves over to guard. Uh, Weston Richburg got ejected later in that game. What is his status? Is he going to have to sit out uh, the game coming up Saturday? Well, he, he got frustrated and, and threw a punch, which uh, there's no excuse to do that. Uh, again, a redshirt freshman and uh, I think going to be a very, very good football player for us. But they ejected him for the half, and that's that was the, the nature of the penalty. So he'll be able to uh, play in the first half of this game. He'll start at center for us. And... Uh, you know, we juggled it around a little bit there when Mark went out because uh, Joe Caprillo, who started at guard, ended up bumping out the tackle. And 
Um, you know, it's nice that uh, we were repping different combinations in there because you never know when you're going to need guys like that. So I, th I thought our offensive line did a nice job. Yeah, Mark Starr was your most uh, experienced offensive lineman coming into the season. I is he going to be a go for Saturday? Well, I don't know. You know, we, we like to be very, very cautious when, when someone has anything to the head or neck. And, uh, you know, it was a concussion. Mark seemed fine after the game. But you just don't want to take guys and put a helmet back on them after they've had concussion-like symptoms. And... Uh, put them in contact so we'll you know we're gonna let him run around a little bit this week and, and kind of judge where he's at and hopefully he'll be available to take some snaps and uh, if not though we're you know like I said we're gonna do what's best for Mark Starr not not as a CSU football player but as a, a person with a long life uh, in front of him down the road so well, let's go to the phones for the first time here tonight and we go out to Lakewood Dave Dave welcome to the Coors Light Steve Fairchild coaches show how are you Hey, doing great, Brian and Steve. How are you this evening? I'm doing great, Dave. Thanks for calling. Steve, hey, you bet. The question for you is, in that game uh, against Idaho, is there one player in particular whose name wouldn't necessarily show up in the box score who really stood out on the field in their performance? I thought for the second week in a row, I thought Guy Miller, a, a defensive tackle, uh, just sometimes I, you know, I, I'm, I spend the time uh, when the defense is on the field, I certainly like to watch the defense and be prepared to make a, a, a game type decision on whether, you know, to, uh, you know, whatever it may call for. But, uh, you know, sometimes I get to looking at my uh, play card and uh, start to get some, you know, calls for the offense ready. But I could not, the last two weeks, it's been hard to take my eye off the front and, and what Guy Miller's done. He's just, he's played tremendous and really been, you know, sometimes those defensive tackles, uh, they don't get, uh, you know the stats because they're getting double teamed. They don't make the tackle and, and necessarily get a sack. But boy, they can be disruptive, and uh, that's what he's been the last couple of weeks. He's really gotten uh, the offensive line kind of out of sync at times. So he he was very very impressive in that game. And looking forward into the TCU game this week, who do you or what do you think is the catalyst that could take us over to a win? Well, I, th I think, number one, they're very explosive uh, when they have the ball. They've got big-time speed, so we cannot let uh, anything cheap happen uh, by missing a tackle or uh, nosing around, letting the ball get over our head, uh, you know, in the secondary. If, if they're going to they're gonna score some points and move the ball, there's no question, but we have got to make them earn uh, everything they do and, and, and wrap them up and get them on the ground and, and make them play a lot of plays before they get the ball down the field. So uh, that, that's probably key defensively. Offensively, you know, again, we've got to generate some run. Uh, if we do, then we've got a much better chance of, of, you know, breaking everybody out and getting everybody involved in the in the offensive game plan. So they're they're formidable to run on, uh, but it'll be a nice test for our young offensive line and our backs. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. Now, as I let you go, could you please comment on the uh, passing of uh, Anthony Cesar? Yeah, that that was just tragic. You know, I, we walked out of that stadium and. Uh, you know, I can't explain how elated everybody, uh, you know, involved in Colorado State football was. And, uh, you know, you go home, you enjoy the evening, watch a little college football. And then, I, I, you know, I, I didn't get wind of it until Sunday morning. Uh, and it's just tragic. And, uh, you know, our, we talked to our football team about it. Anthony was a great Ram and part of that uh, team in the 90s. And I just feel so sorry, you know, for his parents. But, uh you know, it, it really does bring the whole thing into perspective. You know, it's, uh, we play a game, but, uh, you know, life is very fleeting, and uh, we all better enjoy every day we're, we're blessed to have. Hey, well, God bless you guys, and have a wonderful week, and go Ram. Thanks, Dave. Okay, Dave, appreciate that. Yeah, that, uh, I received a text message about uh, Anthony on Saturday as well. Yeah. And just just uh, put a put a bummer on the entire weekend. You know, I, I shut my phone off and didn't, didn't get it till Sunday, but... Uh, you know, it's, you know, we're, we're all young, you know, these kids are young and you, and you think you got your whole life in front of you and, yeah. uh, you know, just with Kelly McGregor and, and now Anthony Cesario, it, uh, it's, it's been an awakening for, for me at least and, uh, you know, you just wish the best for both their families. A yeah, memorial service for uh, Anthony Cesario uh, coming up on Friday down at uh, Pueblo where he was from down there at the campus of uh, CSU Pueblo and there will be a moment of silence uh, before the kickoff coming up on Saturday against TCU in, uh, in honor of, of Anthony, a, a great Ram and now a fallen Ram. With that, we'll take a time out. It's the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show live from Fort Collins from Nelligan Sports at Colorado State Sports Network. Live from Fort Collins tonight, the Coors Light Steve Fairchild Coaches Show here on the Colorado State Sports Network.
Brian Roth with you, the coach Steve Fairchild joining us. Hey, don't forget to be there Saturday when the Rams host the fifth-ranked TCU Horn Frogs. It's the conference opener. Last year, TCU ran the table on the way to the Mountain West and a BCS Bowl appearance. And they have a lot of talent to do it again. Not too much talent. The Rams are going to give them a good game coming up on Saturday. Tickets available. Call 1-800-491-RAMS or visit csurams.com for tickets to Saturday's game again. That is a noon kickoff. 1-866-702-7691, the telephone number. If you want to ask the coach a question, we'll go back to the phone lines and welcome in Lonnie from Loveland. Lonnie, good evening. Hey, good evening. How you doing there? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Lonnie? Good, good. Hey, first of all, congratulations. That was a great victory right there. That sure felt like it. it, it uh, you know, we've, we've stepped up and got plays on all three phases, and uh, just uh, it was a satisfying win. I know our kids played hard, and... Hopefully we're going to get something going here. Yeah, they were. I thought they did a good job picking it up in the second half the way they did in the second, in the first half there a little bit. Well, we stumbled around a little bit offensively in that first quarter. Again, we had a chance to, to score on that first drive. But, uh, you know, they're a good team. They had a nice little game plan. And, and you know, we knew they were going to move the ball some. They've been doing that all year. And uh, we just we kind of got hot there offensively in the second half, and that help, helped our defense not play as many snaps. Mm -hmm. And do you guys pick up where you guys left off during those games? Like, uh, you kind of go over what you did and what, what you could have done? Well, uh, you know, on defensively, I, I thought, you know, we played very, very solid that first game against Colorado. Obviously, we hit a little bit of, bit of a buzzsaw against Nevada and then, again, played a decent game at Miami of Ohio. So th this was a pretty good offense last week, and thought we stood in there. And y the key point is whether it's a 13-10 game or – 43-40, most of the games we play are going to come down to where uh, we're going to be in it at the end and, and within a score or up by a score, and we're going to need a stop defensively or a, a conversion offensively. And, and we had not done that last year. We did it my first year here. We, uh, you know, I think we had five games by a touchdown or less, and we won four of them. Uh, we certainly couldn't find a way to do that last year, and here we were again in a, in a tight one. We found a way to make the plays and, and get it done. Lonnie, yeah. thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay, Lonnie from Loveland. Appreciate that one. 866-702-7691. Winning the close games. And I, I know you learn a ton from that. Well, you do, and, and it's just the nature of college football now. I mean, everybody's – there's not as wide array of teams as you'd think. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the teams in the SEC aren't that much better than the teams in the MAC. And uh, so we're all in this kind of, you know, this kind of – lump sum and there's there's five or six elite ones every year that that just cycle up and they've got a tremendous talent base and there's probably five six ten teams whatever it may be that just uh you know lost a lot and, and can't find a way to replace them but the rest of us are all in there and uh you know there are going to be a lot of close games when you when you look back on the season and you got to find a way to make those plays and and get that first down to hold the ball or whatever it may be. And, and like I said, I was really happy with our football team doing that this, this past Saturday. You know, I wanted to ask you about Ben DeLine and, and, and for him to come back and kick that game-winning field goal. But as a coach, as a coaching staff, do you, do you say anything to your kicker after he misses an extra point like that or you let him be? You know, I, I walked up to him and said, you know, we're going to need you here. And, and, but I, I just kind of said it in passing. Uh, I was I – was, uh, really happy with our football team on the sidelines. They rallied around him and, you know, start telling him how good he was and how confident they were in him. And, and, and Ben doesn't even need that. He's, he's, he's a solid kid. You, you, you get to know him and, and get to know his mom and dad and, and you realize that he, he's the way he is. So, um, you know, I, I liked our chances when we lined up with him to, to win that game. That second game-winning field goal in the career of Ben DeLine to kick the game-winner against Sacramento State back in 2008. Yeah, that was that my, was, first, that was was my first, first win. win. Yeah, we drove down there and, yep. again, got a turnover. And that's the way this game is. You know, you, <laughs> somebody on defense does something, somebody on offense does something, and well, you, next thing you know, you got more points than the other team. So uh, that, that was a big win, and, and Ben was a big part of that. More to come with the coach, Steve Fairchild, but first this time out, we're live in Fort Collins. It's the Beach House Grill from Nelligan Sports, Colorado State Sports Network. 